No doubt you are familiar with other people's stories and wonder if it is true or not. You do your due diligence, you research, you Google, is semen retention legitimate? Hoping some medical article written by an MD, real science, will validate your curiosity to try this out. If this does sound like you, stop with the procrastination and explore it yourself. I don't believe in ideology. I don't believe in being dogmatic or creating any kind of, you know, cult. I, I am an explorer. I am an experimenter. I merely look at the anecdotes and the experiences of other people with a healthy, healthy smattering of some scientific validation from time to time. But ultimately, fundamentally, the only truth is your truth. And the only system that is predicated on getting a certain outcome is the one that you faithfully execute on every day. And I would have it no other way. If I am of value and of use to you and have pointed you in a direction which leads your own personal experience to validate this practice, wonderful. If I have not, wonderful. There is, there is no... There is no burden on me here. Be faithful to what works for you, but don't, don't be ignorant. That's the one thing I will say is that don't dismiss something for lack of objectivity, for lack of, you know, empirical ratified data. Do your own research. Be an explorer. I love the preface of this, uh, of this post. We live in a weird world where men would rather base their opinions on this practice, on what the experts funded by, and experts in quotation here, funded by some dubious sources of money tells them than what their body communicates to them. Listen, brothers, SR is 100% free. It doesn't cost a dime. It takes no time to do, and actually saves you a whole lot if you're used to PMO on the regular. And there is literally zero health risk of trying. So why are you wasting your time looking for articles from experts when you could simply do this for free? Harmless, time-saving practice for yourself and base your opinion of it on the signals your own mind and body are giving you. No one knows what's best for you than you do. I promise you, if you do SR for 30 to 90 days, you will not need a single other person to validate anything for you because your own body signals will be the ultimate proof. There is a muscle that you develop that is predicated on interoception, which is more colloquially put, the sensitivity of information that you can interpret from inside of your body instead of the external, that can be helped with equally interoceptic practices like meditation, like fasting, like continence. Most people, to be transparent with you, are very out of touch with their body. They, you know, they, they don't notice the fine, intimate details that changes. They don't even know when they're lethargic or maybe depressed or perhaps if they're low on energy unless they have a reference point for what it feels like to feel really really good and then you know once you commit to a practice like meditation fasting or SR in 30 days it will be absolutely transparent to you that what you're experiencing is a new state of consciousness because your body is going through a process of healing most people say I couldn't even imagine feeling this good I mean really really just just stay with me here. If you've never felt that good before, you would never know. What I'm trying to tell you is that because we live so intensely in our bodies most days, what you consider to be you feeling good could be somebody else's average or even terrible. You're never going to know a particular destination until you, you travel there and experience it yourself. And that to me makes this all the more compelling and exciting. I have been with my girl for a number of years. I'm past the one month mark on SR, now going for 60 days. She has never been more attracted to me than the way she is right now. She tells me I have changed so much so quickly in appearance and personality and she cannot get enough of it. 
How have I changed so quickly with SR? Brighter eyes with more captivating gaze and the ability to hold that eye contact even when there is tension in the air, sexual or other types of tension included. Deeper, clearer, louder voice, more emotional energy. I used to get burnt out by arguments or debate quickly, giving in because I could feel myself becoming drained. And now it is so easy for me to stand my ground and make myself feel heard. Stand up for myself and the things that I believe in. Women love this in a man, and I no longer feel drained doing it. You have become the stoic, you have become the rock. The porous rock is the analogy I like to use to describe what you become. You imagine a porous rock by the beach. The waves come and they crash into the rock, but the rock doesn't break, the rock doesn't move, but also the porous nature of the rock absorbs the water. It goes through and penetrates the water. And in that way, you want to be open but unyielding. You want to be strong and stoic and unmoving, but equally, you don't want to be a tyrant. And that, that's why I love that analogy so much. Strong, but flexible, but spiritually inclined. Not an egomaniac. Better posture, walking with my head up. Need less sleep. And when I do wake, I feel ready to go. Not like I need a coffee ASAP. Able to push myself way harder in physical activities. Glowing skin, much better memory. Able to focus on conversations easily and recall information to make insightful comments. No brain fog. No more desire to drink or smoke weed. I'm not necessarily against these things in moderation, but I now only do them when I feel like there's some benefit or some social context, not just when I have the free time and the urge. I have rediscovered a love for reading books and can read and remember things with ease. Everything about my girl seems far more attractive to me. I've always found her wildly attractive, but when you haven't released in over a month, every curve, every scent, every smile, every soft touch from her skin sends me in a way that I haven't felt since I started puberty. Obviously, this heightened desire comes out in uh, now my bolder personality, and she, she loves it. Tied to the last point, the world in general becomes more colorful, entertaining, alive, like you're doing a mild psychedelic. I've been losing fat without trying as hard. My face looks more chiseled. It's crazy, and I'm not even mewing. Many more subtle benefits I can't list here without turning this post into a novel. All of this doesn't even count the spiritual benefits I felt from pairing SR with a meditative practice and beginning to get in touch with my body in a way that I've never experienced before. Now, I, I'm pleased that this individual has um, selected to share that particular experience because I, I always, and you should be asking yourself the question, you know, fundamentally, what is this practice for? And a lot of people will talk about the material, the transitory on the surface level. There's no doubting its power. There is no doubting its power, but fundamentally is a process of self-realization, equally fasting, equally meditation. That's why those three, I call them the Holy Trinity in combination, accelerate the process of self-realization far, uh, you know, far quicker. And what I simply mean by that is you are acknowledging the soul, that's your personality. That's fundamentally who you are. You can call it your consciousness, whatever the word you know you personally use to describe that. And you're losing the identity that you have with the person that you have incarnated with. Like Joseph's a very fun character to play. He's fairly eloquent and um, forgive the seeming modesty here. This is how he would describe himself. But um, I fundamentally know that I'm going to discard Joseph at the end of uh, his life and I'm going to reunite back with Source and perhaps I'll choose to incarnate, maybe as a woman next time, I don't, I don't know, or maybe somebody different, or perhaps I will stay uh, you know, with Source and choose to take on my next role as a teacher or a spirit guide, or you know, perhaps I'll uh, you know, revisit different incarnations to revisit lessons that are most poignant to where my soul is in its particular evolution. That's the highest truth. That's the highest goal here. It is not in the transitory. It's not in the 3D. And SR is a disassociation with the body through the senses, through the 
pleasure and sexual reflex. And it's just trying to reunite yourself back with source, back with soul, and fundamentally acknowledge and re-acknowledge your dharma, which you forget uh, when you go through the traumatic process of birth. I hope this post encourages you, the skeptical lurker, to believe in yourself above all else and listen to your own body's insights and of what is and isn't good for you. You don't need somebody with a piece of pa paper from an, an institution funded by special interest money to tell you anything about SR when it is free, time-saving, uh, risk-free practice that you can try for yourself. I promise at the end of it, you'll know whether this works or not for you. And I will say, here, here, and I will end as I began. Be an explorer. Be an ex Don't listen to me. Don't listen to me. I'm, I've got nothing to share with you. I've got nothing for you. You've got everything. And maybe it's uh, time you looked. Facts or theories, you decide. Speak soon.